Hey there, welcome back to The Push Forward. We are the podcast that inspires you to pursue your dreams and achieve your goals. I'm your host, Alex, and today I want to discuss with you what turning your passion into profits is all about. Whether you're dreaming of turning your hobby into a business, or maybe you're already on that journey, this episode is for you. So let's get into it. Well, you know, I've been in the world of entrepreneurship for over two decades. And in that time, I've had the opportunity to pursue a lot of different projects, a lot of different partnerships and, and launch different companies. Some of those, if, if not many, I would say many, did not work for different reasons. Because as you go through the journey, you find out sometimes that even if you're actually making money, monetizing your, your uh, talent, your creation, once you're deep into it, sometimes you find it's not what's giving you that passion. And I think that being passionate about something makes it much easier for you to do it. And you do it at a different level than you do when it's just for money, if it's just transactional. So I, I definitely have been in that world where, hey, I launched a project or a partnership. And just to find out that, you know, a few years into it, uh, I wasn't as passionate anymore. And and certainly that might have something to do with the fact that um, some types of entrepreneurs, some types of people uh, like myself, we, we often um, have what's referred to as the shiny um, object syndrome, right? In shiny object, meaning it's, 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 you're just all over the place. Um, and, and I definitely have trouble with that focusing because I, I want to start new things. But what I do know from, you know, like I said, two decades plus of working, at, uh, in, in, in the business in different industries, but as an entrepreneur, what I do know is that when I'm passionate about, a a, a particular project that I'm on, I don't get bored with it. I can I can go years doing that same thing. And I think a, a great example of that is podcasting. So I have done podcasts where after a season or after, you know, 10, 15, 20 episodes, I no longer feel passionate about covering that subject matter. Whereas there are other podcasts uh, that I've done for three, four, five years. So hundreds of episodes in, you're still having a great time. You can't wait to do it. You take time to not only select the guests, but um, you know, create the content for it, the script, the just the, the whole production. Not 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 just one part of it, but all of it. Post production, getting it out there, and then you come back and you analyze what topics did I cover, and then you go back and you do it again and again and again, and you don't get bored with it. And it's not so much a monetization thing. Sometimes that also your passion may not be as profitable. Uh, you may not be able to monetize it as well as you want to. So there's that consideration as well. But I think um, let's take a step back and think about how you discover your passion. If you're in a career or a job or a business for that matter, that is not giving you that fire in your belly, then I think it's something that you have to um, take the time to explore other interests and hobbies. And you need to identify what truly ignites your passion. Uh, consider your strengths. I always like to do the disc profile, or uh, you could use strength finders. Uh, there's lots of different applications out there that use the this uh, assessment that uh, will, will give you a good idea of what your behavior is all about, right? What, what are your strengths? Are you more social? Are you more, you know, um, high uh, C for compliance, right? Are you a high D for dominance? Um, so you, you try to figure out what your strengths are. And I think the disc profile, uh, certainly helps you do that, but think about your values too. What do you stand for? Um, and then your personal lived experience. I think the lived experience is a big one because we all know different times in our lives where we were involved in a project where pff, from day one, you knew it wasn't for you. I've certainly been there. So start there, discover what that passion is. If you're not feeling that fire in your belly today, do that. Then step two is to set your clear goals. Define the, like really clearly on paper, write it down. What are 
the achievable goals for your passion project. And, and I say project because it should start as a project. Whether it's starting a YouTube channel, a Shopify website, consulting, whatever it is that you want to do, start it as a project first. Create a list of both short-term and long-term goals. And then break down the larger goals into smaller milestones. And those milestones, it needs to be trackable. You need to track your progress. And, and when you hit those milestones, celebrate it because this will motivate you to continue down that path. Number three, you want to create a solid plan. That's different than the goals. The goals are going to fit into your overall plan. So developing a detailed plan and outlining the steps can bring that passion project into life. One tool that I love to use, especially if you're doing a project as a business. So whatever that business is that you're going to do, um, the, the tool that I like to use is by Strategizer. Strategizer uh, is a tool that they, they have templates. And one of the templates is the business model canvas. Business model canvas. Use that to outline each step of the business. You know, consider every aspect such as, you know, the market research that you need to do, keyword research, who's your target audience, what kind of budget are you going to be working with, who's going to be working on your team, when is all this going to happen, what about the marketing strategies, do you have the marketing strategies laid out, are you going to do any partnerships with influencers, creators, who's editing your content, so you need to put that all into the plan, and I think the business model canvas is one of those great tools. And you don't have to use the strategizer one. There's other tools out there as well. But it's basically what I'd call a one-pager uh, plan that will allow you to look at it from 30,000 feet. Where are you going with your goals and your plan? Number four, building your brand. You need to establish a strong brand identity that reflects your passion and resonates with your target audience. So this is hard for most of us. Because in branding, it's not just about the colors, logos. We've talked about it here on the show before on, on previous episodes. It's more than that. It's telling your story, your origin story. Why do you do what you do? There's so much there. And you really do need to spend time crafting a compelling story so that you can, you can convey that passion with your audience. And, and, and that will help you connect with them on a much deeper level, right? Now, number five embracing creativity. Creativity is a must. One of my favorite tools to use when I know I need to be creative is going to be the design thinking framework. So check out design thinking framework. Uh, there's lots of videos out there. Uh, IDEO is one of them. So it's IDEO.com. They basically help organizations around the world to figure out how to do design and how to think outside the box. And they have lots of different tools and resources for you to take your creativity to the next level. Um, I, I took several courses on design thinking and it's helped me not only with my business, but with marketing, with sales, it helps you think outside the box. It's, it's you know, when you use this framework, it's going to just infuse your creativity into an aspect of like, every aspect of your passion project, right? From the product design to marketing campaigns. Um, and it's going to help you also explore innovative ideas that you may have not. And you obviously, when you're creating this, you need to do it with a few people at least because you want to bounce around ideas. It's not just thinking in a vacuum, right? And it's also going to help you stand out in a crowded marketplace because it is crowded. Uh, whatever you're doing today online, believe me, there's somebody already doing it. So uh, there is a fire hose of, of information and content out there. So how do you make yourself stand out? Using design thinking as a, as a framework for creativity is, is really a great tool. Number six, navigating the challenges. So you need to really anticipate and prepare for challenges um, that's going to arise in your journey, such as financial constraints and market competition. In this case, one great tool that you should use is the SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T, that strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's a quadrant, and it is a great framework to understand where you are. Now, of course, if you're starting from the beginning, you're going to say, well, Alex, 
I can't use the SWOT analysis because I don't have um, enough business or or activity or events for me to fill those in. But but what you can do is use parts of the SWOT analysis, like the what weaknesses do you have as a as a person, right? As a leader in your organization or in your project. Again, we we get back to the initial question, which was, how do you turn your passion into a profit, right? You're trying to do something that ignites that fire in your belly. And so understanding what the opportunities for growth is, is really important. And you can do that by using the SWOT analysis. So it's going to help you stay resilient. It's going to help you adapt, right? So no doubt you're going to have setbacks. We all do. Even when a business is moving along and you are way past your, you know, the, the passion part of your project and you're actually generating revenue, guess what? More money, more problems. And that is very true. Even though you enjoy what you're doing, there are parts of it that um, is, is challenging and you're going to have to build a team around that and give the, the things that you're not so good at where you have some weaknesses, you're going to give it to people who have those strengths. And and this you can do also, like I said, tapping into the DISC profiles. Do do those uh, assessments and find out on your team, even if it is a contractor or you're outsourcing, figure out if they mesh well with your style. And the last but not least, number seven is seeking support and mentorship. I can't stress enough how important mentorship really is. Surrounding yourselves with you know, a good network that of, of friends, family, of course, fellow entrepreneurs who really believe in your vision. You need to tell people about your vision, about your passion project, you know, and share with them like the, what, what are the milestones going to be? And it's almost like you're planting that tree in a place and you're going there to water it every day. And you're telling the world like, look, I planted this. I'm going to nurture it. I'm going to make it grow. I'm going to help it grow. And no doubt, it's not always going to be easy. But I think that when you tell the world and you look for support, in my experience, most people, most people are happy to help you in a lot of different ways. Um, And definitely seek guidance and mentorship from experienced professionals who can offer valuable insights and advice. I remember a time 20 plus years ago when I first seeked mentorship. Uh, It was amazing to learn from people who had already gone down that same path that I was starting at. You know, it's kind of like talking to someone who took a a trip across country, started in, let's say, Florida and went all the way to California. And you, you talk to somebody who's done that trip multiple times, they can tell you what the blind spots are and what to experience. And if you're starting out for the first time from point A to point B, you don't know much right? So even though you can feel like I'm adaptable, it, it's, it's, there's going to be some unforeseen things that come up, right? Challenges. And, and having those mentors to me, and now here, here, here I am, you know, two decades later, I love to give back. I love to talk to startup entrepreneurs who are passionate. And I can say, well, look, I, I've gone down this path. Here's what to watch out for. I'm not saying don't do it, but just know what to look for. And you can save someone so much time and headaches. And so for you, if you're starting out and from this passion project that is eventually going to be a profitable business, um, guess what? Get a mentor. And sometimes you'll have to pay and that's okay. Maybe you get a business coach. I don't know. There's lots of different ways that you can get mentorship. Sometimes it's in a, um, a church. Sometimes it's in a business group. But what I can say is get that support and get that mentorship. It will pay off. And there you have it. Here. You've got some valuable tips, I hope, um, into how to turn your passion projects into a success story. I love success stories. We love success stories. So if you are going down that path and you want to be a guest on the show, uh, definitely reach out to us. Remember, it's never too late to pursue your dreams, no matter where you are in life, what age, what your uh, circumstances or background is, you know, turning that hobby into a thriving business. We love to see that. And I've seen that so many times in my life with friends and family, and it's really exciting. So listen, join us next time on the Push Forward podcast as we continue to empower and inspire you on your journey to success. Until then, keep pushing forward towards your dreams. I'm Alex, signing off.